Hello and a very warm welcome to today's session brought to you by Team Baidu's exam prep. I hope all of you are doing really well and are all set for your upcoming exam. Without further ado, I think let's just very quickly get started uh, with today's session because we've got a tall task of covering 100 questions. So I think let's just not uh, waste any sort of time and let's quickly, quickly dive into today's session. Uh, the entire agenda for today's session is very clear. We are going to be looking at 100 questions and the objective of looking at 100 questions is simple uh, to make sure that all of you are reviewing all of you are revisiting uh, all of you are going back to 100 pointers we will continue with this series tomorrow as well so before your exams you will have 200 concepts uh, that you will be able to remember and these concepts can actually help you uh, with making sure mental web maps connecting ideas connecting the topics with the relevant topics i think that will be very 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 helpful so without further ado let's just very quickly get started with today's session uh, let's just quickly get started uh, with Monday's 100 questions express uh, without further ado there'll be a 15 second timer that I will give all of you for every question and we will also be looking at the elaborate explanation of most of the questions so that you can just uh, look at this particular session and revise a couple of pointers okay here comes the first question. The shock doctrine by uh, Nomi Klen is about. What is this shock doctrine all about by Nomi Klen? What is this all about? Good evening, everybody. Good evening. I hope all of you are set for your exams. Let's just see how many of you are able to get the right answer. What is the correct answer here, everybody? What becomes the correct answer here? So let's just try see uh, how many of you are able to back the right answer here. Okay, let's see how many of you get it right. Absolutely right. So we've got a bunch of you getting the right answer. We've got a couple of you getting the right answer over here. That's absolutely the correct answer. That's absolutely the correct answer. So here when we're talking about these kind of questions related to certain pertinent theories, be prepared. You can get those questions also. Uh, shock doctrine. What is the subtitle? The subtitle is the rise of disaster capitalism. Uh, Canadian writer Klen is associated and it's coming in 2007. And this is telling us about the theme of neoliberalism it is telling us about the theme of neoliberalism yesterday only i had posted on uh, telegram platform as well uh, telling you about what is neocolonialism neocolonialism neoliberalism so shock doctrine is something which was coming from nomi klen please remember the subtitle the rise of disaster capitalism 2007 klen is a canadian writer it is telling you about neoliberalism altogether so that is something which uh, clearly shock doctrine is doing a lot of times these kind of questions are constantly asked so you should be aware about it you should be having uh, more grip on these kind of questions and what is it trying to tell you what is it basically trying to tell you it is trying to help you understand the economic revolution altogether and how we're able to see the global economy uh, overall uh, okay moving on to the next question that we are having here comes the next question in playing in the dark tony morrison argues that what what is she arguing what is she arguing amongst these four pointers what is it that tony morrison is arguing tony morrison black arts movement bam writers black aesthetic writers afro-american writers negritude writers uh, critical race theory very important topics for your examination let's see how many of you are in a position to get the right answer here uh, in in the chat box let's see how many of you get it right Yes, Manal, uh, the good wishes are always with you. Blessings with all of you. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. What is the right answer here? What is the right answer here? Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Uh, Neha has given the correct answer. Neha has given the right answer. So playing in the dark is by Tony Morrison. It is trying to tell you about how is the gaze towards Afro-Americans. How is it that Afro-Americans are perceived? That is something that Morrison is telling you about, right? So here, what are you able to see? The prejudices that are there against the Afro-Americans in the literature of the Eurocentric narratives, in the literature of the whites. That is something which is being uh, spoken 
spoken about in greater detail. So what are you able to see? Silence and evasion rule the discourse on race. Yes, there is silence, there is evasion. This is true. One should contemplate the black presence in American literature. You have to look at the black presence. This is true. This is true. Whiteness and blackness are constructs. Absolutely right. With the abolition of slavery, American literature has become homogenous. Not at all. It has not become homogenous. So these three pointers are absolutely right. That is something that uh, playing in the dark, playing in the dark, Tony Morrison talks about. You are able to see that this is trying to tell you about the perception, the gaze that is there, the gaze, the perception which is there of Afro-Americans as they see it. It is also trying to tell you about uh, the story of the Afro-Americans from their own words right in their own words you're able to see their stories all together you want to dispel the silence you want to erase the silence which is there you want to talk about the new uh, reality altogether subtitled whiteness and the literary imagination whiteness and the literary imagination 1992 please remember that moving on to the next question critics argue that dr faustus is a great but flawed play what are the weaknesses of the play just like we know that what are the weaknesses hamlet and his problems and the problems that are there in Hamlet. Similarly, what is the problem with Dr. Faustus? What is the most important problem according to critics when we are looking at the play uh, which is uh, taking us to the Faustian myth? What is the correct answer here everybody? Good evening. Yes, good evening, good evening, Sharmila. Good evening. What is the correct answer here everybody? What becomes the right answer? Let's just see how many of you are able to get the right answer here. Okay, we have uh, we have got attempts. Ina has given the right answer. Ina has given the right answer. That's that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Okay, so basically, what are you able to see? You're able to see that there are certain flaws. First of all, there are these stupid scenes. There are these farcical stupid scenes that you're able to see, right? So that is one of the major problems that is coming in. That is one of the major issues that is coming in. It's a tragedy. It's a tragedy that you're largely able to look at. All right. It was first performed in 1590. It is trying to celebrate the spirit of Renaissance humanism, which is a hallmark of uh, enlightenment overall. Uh, so please remember these, these are the problems, the insipid, insipid, the stupid farcical scenes that are there. Middle section is not developed. Middle section is not developed. The frontal, the exposition is great. The exposition is great. You are able to see that, but middle portion is not developed at all. We see Faustus engaging in all sorts of crazy pursuits, so doesn't look like a man of stature uh, being uh, engaged in these kind of uh, uh, these these various kinds of pursuits altogether that is something that you're able to see all uh, right so here um, language is, uh, is is something that everybody has phrased largely but these are the two major problems dr faustus very important work if even if you right now you've not done anything from dr faustus just keep a companion so today's lecture how are you supposed to be proceeding with it just keep a companion the oxford companion with you just look at dr faustus from the companion or look at christopher marlowe from the companion okay middle section is also not developed comical scenes farcical scenes it is a it's it's a renaissance tragedy altogether remember shakespeare's learning so much he's a university with he's a free shakespearean dramatist match the following you have to match the following these are your uh you know your your so-called plays and these are the writers of the plays what is the correct answer here what is the correct answer here absolutely right Anna. correct correct Chill, uh, Nikita. Nikita is like, I'm feeling so, uh, so scared that my mind is telling me that you don't know anything. Tell your mind that you know everything. You've prepared really well. Uh, believe in yourself at this particular juncture and don't stress. Don't stress at all. It will not help you at all. What is the correct answer here? Vahida, uh, uh, Abantika, Gaurav, Vahida, Nikomoni, Niti, Aptara, everybody, Shilpa, Yugesh, Ravi, everybody is given the right answer. Ralph Royster Doister, Nicholas Odal, very important comedy, Spanish tragedy, Thomas Kidd, Old Wife's Tales, George Peel, and Edward II is by Christopher Marlowe. Edward II is by Christopher Marlowe. So this was like really simple. Uh, these are all a part of your development 
development of drama early drama pre shakespearean drama those kind of topics uh, you'll be able to see most of these uh, being answered okay ralph royster doister spanish tragedy uh, old wives tales edward the second all of them are important writings this is an early example ralph royster doister grammar gotton's needle these are all examples of early comedies that you are able to see spanish tragedy very important prototype of revenge tragedy per se old wives tale mocking the current traditions altogether okay match the following you need to match the following what is the correct answer here what is the correct answer here if you have to match the following what becomes the correct answer here everybody where are these lines taken in from where are these lines taken in from oh sorry i think i didn't maybe zia is not uh, in india okay what is the correct answer here everybody okay fantastic that is the correct answer uh, so the rest the rest is silence this is coming in hamlet the rest is silence this is something which you are able to see uh, that is coming in hamlet right these are lines that you are able to look at they are coming in hamlet these violent delights have violent ends romeo and juliet violent delights are having violent ends so this is these are lines that are coming from romeo and juliet right if music if music be the food of love play on 12th night these are lines that are coming from 12th night 12th night is having these lines and hamlet ripeness is all ripeness is all in is sorry ripeness is all is coming in king lear right Rap, uh, ripeness is all is coming in king lear um right king lear here that is what you are able to see so the rest is silence is hamlet these violent delights have violent ends romeo and juliet if music be the food of love play on 12th night ripeness is all king lear even if you have not done these plays just look at right now your oxford companion all right just look at your oxford companion right now and if possible a little bit of maybe uh, a lit charts or a course hero or a spark notes on these just these plays hamlet king lear 12th night romeo and Juliet. Okay, so please uh, remember that. All right, in the school for scandal, the school for scandal, Sir Oliver Surface resolves the problems when he returns from. Where is he returning from? Where is it that he is returning from? Again, the reference that you are able to see. What is the correct answer here, everybody? Where is he returning from? What is the place that he is returning from? What is the correct answer here? He is returning from where? He is returning from where? No need to be scared. Be very positive. Law of manifestation. Be extremely positive at this particular juncture. Uh, what is the correct answer here? R. B. Sheridan's play. We haven't got the right answer yet. <laughs> Okay, all of you. Yes, yes, yes. Who is this? Ash, uh, Amisha. Amisha Aurora has answered it correctly. He is returning from India. Why are you uh, devaluing India, right? Amisha. Amisha was the only one, I think. Uh, I think I saw Amisha's answer only, right? Was the only one. India is absolutely the correct answer. So, school for scandals. Sir uh, Oliver Surface. He is resolving all the problems when he returns from India. When he's returning from India. R. B. Sheridan's play. It's a very important play. You can't go wrong with this play because it's an important 18th century play that you're able to see right so please remember that which play by ben johnson begins with the prologue admonishing the audience it is actually criticizing the audience so which play is actually criticizing the audience which play is criticizing the audience so which play are we able to see is criticizing the audience the audience is getting criticized which play is this that we are looking at largely Zia, just be very positive. Physical pain is a part of it, and don't overthink. Just give the paper. We'll do an analysis of how the paper goes. There's no point stressing at all right now. Just give it your best shot, because otherwise, uh, just practice DI questions. Uh, just practice things which are scoring right now, right? Just do that, and things will be sorted. Don't worry. Yes, absolutely right. Bartholomew's Fair is the correct answer. Bartholomew's Fair is absolutely the correct answer here. Ben Johnson. Uh, here, Bartholomew's Fair is actually 
actually starting with the prologue that is literally admonishing it is literally scolding the audience right it's trying to tell you that you have to use your power of discretion use your intelligence altogether you can't really uh, consume everything and anything that is given to you you have to question and be very involved the lion and the jewel by ward shoinka the nobel prize winning writer uh, so we had talked about uh, in the uh, you know in the uh, on on telegram only had shared the nobel prize uh, post and when we are looking at the nobel prize post we talked about gurna gurna the writer from tanzania the second black writer after uh, tony morrison to be awarded the uh, nobel prize ward shoinka is also one of the first black writers to get the nobel prize right lion and jewel important what is it about what what is the lion and the jewel all about by bold showing ka what is it that lion and jewel is actually dealing with yes absolutely right uh, absolutely right guddu anvesh das das priyanka juhi wahida no uh, zahida everybody has answered it correctly uh, tradition and modernity in africa how the role of women is changing and progressing these are very important issues that were raised in the 1962 play so what are you able to see over here you're largely able to see that tradition and modernity how are they coexisting changing rule interracial wars are not really presented so these two are the correct answers here lion and the jewel uh which famous the uh, the famous irish play juno and the peacock by uh, sino cassie is dealing with what what is sino cassie's play juno and the peacock dealing with there is something that juno and the peacock is dealing with specifically there is something specifically that juno and the peacock is dealing with what is it that we are able to see that juno and the peacock is dealing with That's so sweet of you. That's very kind of you, Zia. But don't overthink. Just don't be too harsh on yourself. Okay, that's perfectly all right. Uh, okay, B is the right answer. Wahida, Nikomoni, Zahida, Juhi. Uh, everybody is uh, Abantika. Very good, Abantika. Uh, Abantika. Everybody. That's what I was telling. Uh, Tista and Rupesh also from the classroom class were having high hopes. Not to put undue stress on all of you, but we are expecting JRF from most of you. Okay. Uh, slum life in Dublin is absolutely the correct answer here. So Juno and the Peacock is giving you glimpses of the slum life. Um, you are able to see it set in the working class life. Fall together, written by Sino Kesi, performed in 1924. All together, which of the following books is not about English studies in India? It is not about English studies in India. So, which work is not about English studies in India? What is the correct answer here? It is not about English studies in India. So, which work are you able to see? It's not dealing with English studies in India altogether. What is the correct answer here? Do you know? Uh, yes, Bajri. Your answer must be visible for sure. What becomes the correct answer here? Yes, Wahida, Tahmina, Shilpa. Af, uh, no, Aftara. No, uh, no, no, no. Uh, so, in theory, is not about. It's not about English studies in India, right? Uh, so, in theory, is not about that. But the others are examples. In theory, by Jaz Ahmed, is not an example of English studies in India. The general commentary altogether, the lie of the land, gifts of English, mass of conquest, all of these are. related to english studies in india please remember that okay uh, so that is something so eja samads in theory is not about english studies in india mask of conquest by gauri vishwanathan tells you about how english was introduced by the britishers and this particular language that was introduced by the britishers was purely for the purposes of ruling that's about it okay uh, this gift of english english education and formative alternative hegemonies in india is by alok mukherjee the lie of the land english studies in india is by rajeshwari sundar rajan all of these three works are very important when we are talking about english in india all right when we are looking at the topic of english in india these works become important edward said's reading of jane austen's mansfield park that demonstrates deep implications of imperialism is an example of what what is this an example of what is this an example of just give me one second Sorry. Yeah. What is it becoming an example of?
right absolutely right absolutely right uh, this is a very important pertinent point that has been made over here uh, so this is an example of what is famously called as the contrapunctual reading uh, that is again something that was being spoken about by writers like tony morrison as well that you need to um, give visibility you need to question the perception which is there in the minds of other people uh, so that is something that these writers are talking about so jane austen's mansfield park is demonstrating deep implications of imperialism uh, this is an example of contrapunctual reading contrapunctual reading so what is contrapunctual reading contrapunctual reading he is also defining it by the way and what is the major definition that he is giving he is telling you it is dealing with the understanding of what is involved when the author shows for instance that uh, that you know that a colonial sugar plantation is seen to be more important see basically you're trying to give contrapunctual as you're going against something which is established already you're trying to make sure that there is greater visibility to something that is there so terms post-colonial terms literary terms whatever catalogs you have made during your preparations just put them together just compress them together just make sure that you know you're going back to your notepads that's important there is no such thing as free speech and it's a good thing too is an essay written by this is an essay which is coming from the pen of who's writing this essay who's the person who's writing this particular essay who's the writer who is the writer who's associated with this particular essay what is the correct answer here Prithu, it's a mixture. Yes, Vaida, B is the right answer. B is the right answer. This is by Stanley Fish. You could have immediately made sure that, you know, uh, it's a sort of uh, 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 example related to reader response theory only. There's no such thing as free speech. And it's a good thing too. So this is by Stanley Fish. Identify the theoretical formulation that does not belong to the group theoretical uh, so here there are these terms only one is not belonging what is the correct answer here what is the correct answer here everybody give it a thought don't be in a hurry to answer the question uh, C is the correct answer. I saw a lot of you writing B. See, basically all the other terms are associated with buxton. All the other terms, heteroglossia, carnivalesque, polyphony, these are all terms associated with buxton. Whereas panopticon is not a concept associated with buxton. Please remember that. It is telling you about, it's associated with ben, Jeremy Bentham, it's associated with Foucault as well, telling you about surveillance. This is a term associated with surveillance, panopticon. So there, the state creates a panopticon where they they can uh, make sure that all our activities are getting monitored otherwise polyphony carnivalist heteroglossia these are terms associated with buxton please remember that in the context of eco criticism three phases three phases identified by cheryl glotfelty are what are the three phases that are identified the three phases that we're able to see What is the correct answer here? The three phases. What are the three phases that are identified? Eco-criticism, eco-feminism. All of these are important quest studies. What is the correct answer here? Cheryl Glotfelty, three phases that are there. The representation of nature in, in literature. How is nature being represented? Uh, how would you recover nature's writing text altogether? Right. And finally, you're trying to develop a particular framework of reading text in a particular way. Very important work by Glot Felty, which is coming in. Uh, it's actually A, which is the right answer. OK, it is actually the representation of nature in literature. Identifying the representation of apocalypse. No, actually not apocalypse per se. It is just trying to look at nature because the way that we are treating nature as a result apocalypse is inevitable that's a different that's an inference that is an inference that we're able to, to, to see but that is not the three phases that Glotfelty talks about recovery of nature's writings and analyzing the simple symbolic construction of species right what is the first thing you have to see the representation how is nature getting represented how is so the, the three phases according to uh, uh, according to glotfelty the first one is you have to look at how is nature getting represented 
then you are looking at the recovery then you are trying to literally cull out the various uh, instances of nature representation and finally you are looking at the construction finally you are taking a look at the construction overall that is something that is taking place so please remember three phases the representation of nature recovery of nature writing text and then analyzing the symbolic construction that is something the eco criticism reader landmarks in literary ecology this is by glot pelty an epic work in eco criticism it isn't language which has a hole in its ozone layer it isn't language which has a hole in the ozone layer identify the author and the book in which the famous statement appears where are we able to see 15 questions up let's just quickly quickly build the momentum and make it a little faster let's just uh, make a few questions a little more faster so that we can practice more uh what is the correct answer yes somya yadav has answered it kate super what is nature 1995 it isn't language which has a hole in the ozone layer so this is super that we are talking about right this is kate super's writing what is nature what is nature 1995 telling about constructedness altogether and how we need to address that if kusovsky sedgwick's epistemology of the closet is a seminal work of we don't need time for this i'm sure everybody should get it right we'll not even spend a lot of time on that i think everybody should get it right What is the correct answer here, everyone? Yes, Vahida, it is absolutely the right answer. Quest studies or gay lesbian studies is absolutely the correct answer here. Okay, so this is a seminal work of gay and lesbian criticism. Uh, Eve Kosofsky Sedgwick, American theorist, uh, gay lesbian studies, quest studies, telling you about binaries, telling you about heteronormative relationships, uh, about homophobia altogether. That is something that these writers are primarily trying to uh, discuss overall. Okay. uh moving on to the next one bruno latour and stevie woolner inaugurated a new wave of cultural studies of science with the publication of with the publication of with the publication of with the publication of absolutely right it is with the publication of laboratory life right laboratory life the construction of scientific facts laboratory life or the construction of uh, scientific facts right that's what bruno latour and stevie woolner were writing even scientific facts were actually constructed keeping in mind something that is furthering the ideology this links back to what we were discussing in the 9 pm classroom class that everything is actually something that marxism says tied to a particular ideology that you're supporting The essay, a cyborg manifesto, written by Donna Haraway in uh, published in nineteen eighty five in in the again something that you should be knowing an epic work altogether. What is the correct answer? What becomes the correct answer, everybody? Yes, yes, yes. That's right, Yogesh. That's right. What is the correct answer here? Vaida has got it right, absolutely right. In the Socialist Review, in the Socialist Review, right. So here it was published in the Socialist Review altogether, and here we are able to see human, animal, machine. Those are the lines that are getting questioned. Dryden comments that affecting the metaphysics in love poems by metaphysical poets is affecting the metaphysics in love poems uh, by the metaphysical poets is what is it? what is it what is it is it is it something that is natural is it poetic or not poetic not natural it's not natural we haven't got the right answer but it's not natural affecting the physics the metaphysics in love poems it's not natural he's he's literally uh, literally talking about the fact that this is something which doesn't comes very spontaneously Okay, what does Matthew Arnold mean by the term disinterestedness? Disinterestedness. What is he meaning by disinterestedness? Simran, don't stress. Don't stress. Don't even think about कुछ याद आ रहा है कि नहीं आ रहा है. Right now, keep yourself calm, composed. That's okay. Just give the exam. 
then we'll come back and talk about it because you know as it is within 48 hours you can't really do anything but don't get stressed and give, put your best foot forward even if you've not studied a lot but still put your best foot forward mm we haven't got the right answer ina has got it right vaida has got it right this was a very simple affair has got disinterestedness i'm going to be looking at it objectively very simple it was very very simple i will look at it objectively right so that is disinterestedness that we are able to see please remember that which work deals elaborately with telling and showing in fiction with telling and showing in fiction telling and showing in fiction telling as well as showing in fiction so which work is it that we are able to see it's telling you elaborately about telling as well as showing in fiction what is the correct answer here yes shona right that's right that's right the rhetoric of fiction tells us about that it's telling you about telling as well as showing all together this is a book by clayson booth wayne clayson booth is writing it an american critic that we're talking about telling us about telling and showing art then telling is just like narrating showing is you are exemplifying one thing is that okay what are the qualities that you will bring to the table i am a very hard working diligent person the other is showing it calling it calling out examples to show so telling versus showing art then is becoming and happening of truth name the philosopher who gave this definition who is this philosopher who gave this definition art then is becoming and happening of truth the german philosopher the german philosopher you can even add it in your german literature notes yes it's martin heidegger it's martin heidegger absolutely right martin heidegger art is becoming and happening of truth so this is a definition given by the german philosopher in the original work of art in the original work of art he is giving this particular definition altogether who distinguishes between theory as a body of knowledge and theory as a practice theory as a body of knowledge and theory as a practice let's push up the momentum a little theory as a body of knowledge and theory as practice keep your water bottles keep yourself hydrated uh, right now it's really important for you to do that what is the correct answer here everybody correct 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 that's that's absolutely the right answer that's absolutely the right answer yes it is gerox right theory is a body of knowledge and theory as practice this is gerox who's telling us right so it's henry gerox that we're talking about american canadian scholar on critical pedagogy he is the one trying to tell us about how you have the theory as knowledge and theory as practice name the philosopher who, who attempted to fuse structuralism with marxism structuralism with marxism trying to put these two together structuralism and marxism trying to get these two things together structuralism and marxism trying to get these two things coming together what is the correct answer here structuralism and marxism louis althusser very good somya wahida somya very nice bachche okay i hope like you know we have a grf soon somya okay nice uh, louis althusser is absolutely the right answer french marxist philosopher uh, marx and reading capital very important works which are coming from althusser's pen according to pere bourdieu cultural capital is what is cultural capital what do we mean by cultural capital what is the true understanding of cultural capital what is the true understanding what is the true meaning of culture capital here let's see how many of you are able to get the right answer culture capital culture capital what is it pastor san yes aftara has got it right vaida has got it right excellent excellent cultural knowledge and competence which empowers you that is cultural capital so for instance if you're coming from an influential family the chances of you going abroad for your studies getting that quality education not that it's not available here it is obviously going to be higher you're going to be going to the harvards of the world the whartons of the world the university of pennsylvanias of the world you'll be going to those kind of institutions altogether so cultural knowledge and competence that you're getting the kind of exposure 
exposure that you're getting peri bird view is there uh, you also have a uh, passerin who is associated with it right bird view is there so please remember that that cultural reproduction and social reproduction they're talking about culture capital who's the author of after amnesia after amnesia after amnesia after amnesia who's the writer uh, who's getting who is the author what is the correct answer after amnesia after amnesia this is a work coming from the pen of which writer ganesh narayan das devi after amnesia very important yes absolutely right devi is the right answer devi is absolutely the right answer ganesh narayan das devi that we are talking about writer of after amnesia right so that is uh, devi's writings the linguistic turn or the semiotic turn refers to the linguistic turn or the semiotic turn refers to the linguistic turn or the semiotic turn is referring to what the linguistic turn or the semiotic turn what is it referring to what is it that it's referring to what is the correct answer it's basically telling you the representation of reality right it's not telling you so it, this is the same thing that is also associated with romanticism romanticism is just not uh, nature loving it's the recollection of nature it is a recollection of nature i can still sit over here in a metropolitan city and still think about the mountains so it's not nature but it's a recollection of nature it is a memory that is making your life better similarly representation of reality than reality that is the linguistic turn or the semiotic turn that you are able to see this is something that richard rorty richard rorty was trying to talk about semiotic turn linguistic turn it's not reality it is a represent what is happening right now i i ask you something what do you do you go and watch your videos what are your videos richard rorty would say these are the representation of reality it's not reality if for instance today i am not able to download a document or if i have downloaded a document in pdf form i want to convert it into a word form or a ppt format i go to uh, go to google i go on google and then i'm going to be typing so I, it's a representation of reality very important even gustav berman uh, berman uh, bergman is trying to talk about it so linguistic turn semiotic turn make a catalog if you're preparing for the next net attempt make a catalog of all these terms which are coming in like specialization linguistic term semiotic term very important which indian critic has made several uh, made a cultural analysis of the film rosa, rosa. film studies very good shalini yes he is associated with neo pragmatism also very nice pointer what is the correct answer here what becomes the correct answer here everybody what is the correct answer here yes right why does answer it correctly it is tejaswini niranjana tejaswini niranjana is the person interrogating whose nation tourist and terrorist in rosa that's the work who is generally described as the most malevolent character in the scarlet letter malevolent mal root word means bad mal root word means bad malevolent is actually bad uh, uh, sort of mal content that you're able to see what is the correct answer here who's the most malevolent character that you're able to see in the scarlet letter his name is only standing for it Yes, Vahida. It is Roger Chillingworth. It is Roger Chillingworth, right? Roger Chillingworth is absolutely the right answer. Doctor, scholar, husband of Hester Prynne, and he is like you know a deformed, uh, morally deformed character that we're able to see. Which postmodern novel is having two endings? There are two endings. Postmodern literature, instances of postmodernism, features of postmodernism, theories of postmodernism. they're all equally important for all of you what is the correct answer here what becomes the right answer here there are two endings there are two endings right absolutely right sushmita wahida zahida Uh, Shalini, everybody has got it right. It is the French Lieutenant Woman. It is the French Lieutenant Woman that you are able to see is having two endings, right? Father Time is a character in which work? Father Time is a character in which work? 
father time let's push a few questions father time father time father time is a character in which work are you able to see the character of father time coming in Sorry, yeah, uh, right, absolutely right. It's uh, it's a character in Jude the Pure, the son of Jude Fowley, right? The son of Jude Fowley. Uh, and here, of course, Thomas Hardy becomes an important uh, person that we're largely looking at. Muriel Sparks' novel, Memento Mori, is about. Memento Mori is about. Memento Mori is about. What is Memento Mori about? Yes, yes. What is Memento Mori predominantly dealing with? Muriel Sparks, another important writer, Prime of Mystery and Rudy's main. It is about, yes, Vaida, it's about old people, right? It's about old people. Memento Mori is all about old people. British novelists, postmodern British novelists are also important. You will definitely get two to three questions on British postmodern writers, British POMO writers. So please remember that uh, that is something that you'd have to keep in mind. Uh, and Memento Mori, remember you must die. It's telling you about death. It's telling you about old age altogether. Gerontology is something that is being discussed. Driver's seat, by the way, on all the quests, actually, Prime of Mystery and Rudy, driver's seat, uh, all of them, you've got questions in your exams. Doris Lessing's The Grass is Singing is about, Doris Lessing's The Grass is Singing is about what? The Grass is Singing is about what? The grass is singing is about what? Doris Lessing's The Grass is Singing is about what? What is this work largely telling you about? What is it that uh, that the work is dealing with? Yes, absolutely right. It's about a racist society, right? It's about a racist society. It's largely dealing with it. It's Lessing's first novel that you're able to see. It is trying to talk about the racial dynamics. And uh, of course, Doris Lessing is the recipient of the Nobel Prize. In which novel by Virginia Woolf does the protagonist gender change midway through the narrative? Very simple. Quickly answer this and other works are equally important. The other works are equally important to Virginia Woolf. What is the correct answer here? What becomes the correct answer here? What is the correct answer? Vita Sakwale West is also somebody who's, yes, Soumya, Vahida, Aftara, everybody is getting it right. Orlando is the right answer. Orlando is the right answer. Okay. And please remember, Orlando was the longest and the most charming love letters in literature, right? That is what Vita Sakwale's son had mentioned. The method of research that begins with the hypothesis or the theory then searches for evidence either to support or refute that hypothesis or theory is termed as. What is it termed as? What is it termed as? What is it that we're able to see it is termed as? The method of research that begins with the hypothesis or the theory and then, you know, it is going to evidence to support or refute that. What is it termed as? What is it, it largely termed as? What is it that you're able to see it's termed as? Yes, it is deductive, right? It is deductive. Absolutely right. Which of the following statements is incorrect with regard to literature review? With regard to literature review. Literature review. What is literature review and which is incorrect? Look at the, uh, the statement. Which is incorrect? It's not asking you the correct one. It's asking you which is incorrect altogether. Which is the one which is incorrect? That is something that it's asking you for. What is the correct answer here, everybody? 
to collect relevant quotations on the problem at hand that is not a literature review so a is absolutely only to know this is wrong uh, a is there in all of these right a is there in all of these so you know that there is something faulty with a altogether uh, moving on to identify what the previous researcher said on the research question that is true to identify the problems and potential pitfalls in the chosen area that is true to reject substandard literature as irrelevant to the task no it is not irrelevant it's not irrelevant you are trying to prove why is it substandard or what is the reasons contributing to it so one and fourth are wrong when we are talking about literature review it really helps you to define the scope of your research do a sort of a existing stock check you are doing a stock check of sorts which of the following is an example of academic research in humanities academic research in humanities which is an example of an academic research that you are able to see in humanities academic research what is the right answer yes sm this is life this is life what is the correct answer here yes everyone let's answer it what is the correct answer sam sangita has got the right answer orientalism is absolutely the right answer it's academic research over here that you're largely able to see okay wings of fire is an autobiography my experiments with truth again an autobiography passage to england is a travel memoir by nirathi choudhury please remember that okay comparative research on two literary traditions aims at what is comparative uh, comparative research aiming at what is it that it's aiming at what is comparative research largely aiming at what is it that we are able to see that it's aiming at yes everybody what is the correct answer here what is the correct answer here yes you're drawing new insights into two traditions right if that's what you're trying to do which is not an appropriate way to relate oneself with research which is not an appropriate way to relate oneself with research what is the correct answer here what is it that is the right answer over here yes sharmila and everybody is right research so research is a means of knowledge production is not an appropriate way so it is knowledge production sol pro solving problems Uh, as only a means of getting a phd degree so i i i know that all of us would be having that in mind but that's not appropriate as forwarding a hypothesis that's true okay okay the skills that can be developed through audio lingual method include audio lingual method the audio lingual method what are the skills that you can improve so while you are you are acquiring the secondary language what are the skill sets that can be improved by using the audio audio lingual method So while you're using the audio lingual method, what is it that you can actually uh, seem to be seeing that can help you? So mastering sound systems, grammatical patterns, you can easily figure it out. Uh, adhering to the natural order of listening, speaking, reading, writing—that is so true. Teaching pronunciation from the beginning, absolutely right. Allowing students' native language to interfere with the target language learning, no. So the first three are absolutely right. You get a proper knowledge about rhythmic patterns, pronunciation, that becomes clearer. Audio lingual method. According to Noam Chomsky, one of the following is not a factor leading to language acquisition. It is not a factor leading to language acquisition. it is not a factor leading to language acquisition what is it according to norm chomsky it's one of them is not a language uh, acquisition uh, process or it's not a part of your language acquisition process overall what is the correct answer here yes happy one what is the correct answer correct co so everybody has got it right so uh, it's not a factor leading to language acquisition rule formation habit for see habit formation is not a factor 
uh, that will lead to language acquisition over here. Uh, so that is something that you'll have to be very mindful of. It's not a factor that leads to language acquisition for Noam Chomsky. For Noam Chomsky, but otherwise it's very, very helpful. Only the learners can do the learning. This observation most aptly reflects to which of the following methods of language teaching learners can do by learning. Learners can do, uh, so only the learners can do the learning. They can only do the learning. So only the learners can do the learning. They themselves are responsible for it. V. Sharmila got the right answer or was it for the previous one? Yes, Vahida, absolutely right. Absolutely right. It is uh, the silent method. They will do it themselves. We are giving them autonomy. They'll do it themselves altogether. So teaching foreign languages in schools a silent way. 1963, we're able to see that this is coming by Get No Go. An educator, Caleb Get, uh, Get Egno, was the one who was coming up with it. Silent method, learners will help themselves, okay? In silent method, the teacher does not facilitate one of the following, is not facilitating one of the following. Which one is the right answer here? Which one is not facilitated by the teacher? One is not getting facilitated by the teacher. So which one are we talking about primarily over here? Which one is not facilitated by the teacher? What becomes the correct answer here, everyone? Let's see how many of you are able to get the right answer. Yes, Akanksha Singh has got the right answer. Uh, so, silent method does not facilitate. It's not facilitating dependence on the teacher. You're rather making them independent. You're rather making them independent. But please remember silent method, Caleb get, get Egno, Caleb get Egno, very, very important for the silent method. Silent method, learners themselves will learn. Teacher's intervention is not important also over here. One of the following is not the goal of the teachers who use desuggestopedia. Who are using desuggestopedia. What is the correct answer? Desuggestopedia. For teaching of English uh, as a secondary language or questions related to the acquisition of language, uh, they are very simple largely. Even if you have not studied, try to read the question once or twice. You will be able to at least answer bits and pieces of it. What is the correct answer here? Which of them is not the goal? Desuggestopedia. The goal is not to emphasize grammar. Okay. Emphasis on vocabulary is there. English uh, uh, speaking and communication is there, but grammar is not there, right? Emphasizing grammar is not the goal in desuggestopedia. Please remember that. Desuggestopedia, Bulgarian psychotherapist, Georgie Lossano. Georgie Lossano. So again, even for your next timers or for your PhD entrances, gate exam, etc., make a proper list of important theories, important theorists who are coming in. Just make a catalog altogether. That will be so helpful. Which Indian play provided a powerful ex expression of disillusionment with a post-Nehruvian era? Disillusionment. A complete disillusionment with the post-Nehruvian era. Complete, complete sort of a disillusionment with the post-Nehruvian era. Which work are we talking about? Girish Karnad's writing. What is the correct answer here? Girish Karnad's writing. What is the correct answer? Sonali Mishra, uh, Gaurav. Yes, Aziz, everybody. Neha, Jain, very nice. Sushmita. It is Tughlaq that we're talking about, right? It's Tughlaq that we're talking about. It's telling you about disillusionment with the post nehruvian era altogether. It is set and telling you about the 14th century uh, leader. Who's the author of Spectre of Marx? Spectre of Karl Marx, Spectre of Marx, who's the writer who's writing it? Spectre of Marx. Who's the person writing the Spectre of Marx? What is the correct answer? The Spectre of Marx. Who's the person writing it? The Spectre of Marx. What is the correct answer here? Absolutely right. It is Derrida. Derrida is the right answer. Spectres of Marx, the state of debt, the working of mourning and, and new international. This is a work which is coming from the pen of Derrida. The medium is message is a phrase coined by. The medium is message is a phrase coined by. 
who is coining the phrase the medium is message the medium is message this is a phrase that is coined by the medium is message is a phrase coined by this is like really simple yes absolutely right marshall mcluhan is the right answer right marshall mcluhan is the person helping us canadian philosopher please remember writing a book called understanding media the extension of man understanding media the extension of man okay let's move on to the next question here we go which of the following statements is or are correct with regards to popular culture with regards to popular culture popular culture which is true yes everyone what is true when we are talking about popular culture what is popular culture so popular culture is a set of practices beliefs objects that are prevalent in the society true popular culture uh, so one is not there in third option this will be eliminated popular culture influences an individual's attitude towards certain topics yes it is also a sort of uh, you know collective unconscious that we are talking about popular culture holds the noble and dignified values no it is not the noble and dignified values popular culture distinguishes between high and low culture it's not necessarily distinguishing uh, but pop culture is a little different altogether so one and two are right in film studies christian myths is associated with christian myths is associated with what is christian myths associated with christian myths christian myths is associated with what is the correct answer here what is christian myths associated with christian myths in film studies in the context of film studies is associated with the screen theory please remember that screen theory riddles of the phoenix refers to riddles of the phoenix refers to riddles of the phoenix is referring to what is riddles of the phoenix referring to yes absolutely right it's referring to the, to, to the title of a film that was written by laura molvi and peter woolen okay a cultural group which is the larger culture in which the larger culture having beliefs interests that varies with those of the larger culture is termed as a cultural group in which the larger culture often having beliefs or interests that varies with those of the larger culture is termed as what is this termed as what is the term that is given what is the term that we are using it is a subculture it is a subculture please remember that it's a subculture that we're talking about okay now this is a poem i'm giving you a little longer time for this you have to read the poem just read the poem then i'll give you the questions that are to follow okay i want you to read the passage first all right um then i will uh, give you just take a second just take a second take a look at it and then we'll start okay take a look at it and then we'll start okay nothing gold can stay nature's first green as gold her hardest hue to hold her early life's a flower but only so an hour then leaf subsides to leaf so eden sank to grief so dawn goes down to day nothing gold can stay nothing gold can stay right nothing gold can stay nothing is permanent so just completely chill relax everyone who is feeling scared this is the first question that is coming from the passage this is the first question that is coming from the passage don't stress too much about it um uh, just like try and answer the question uh, don't think too much about it but just see uh, how many of you are able to answer the question correctly okay let's let's just try and take a tour of that like how many of you get it right 
a couple of you have started answering it as well a lot of you have answered it and not just answered it a lot of you have answered it correctly as well right a lot of you have technically answered it absolutely right if you can remember where is it taken from that is perfectly all right uh, even if you're not able to understand so this is nothing gold can stay is a very beautiful poem by robert frost uh, so even if you these most important writers if you're reading it in bits and pieces you will be able to get them uh, by and large right here uh, nature's first green is gold uh, this basically means that everything at the beginning is at the nascent stage is very fresh right at the early stage it's something which is very very fresh all together so all things are beautiful in their early stage all things are beautiful in their early stage okay please remember that uh okay this is the th 53rd question what does early leaf means what does early leaf mean what do we mean by early leaf early leaf what do we mean by early leaf early leaf so what does this mean early leaf when uh, we are looking at early leaf what do we mean by early leaf mrinal has got it right in the early stage the leaf looks like a flower right the early leaf Okay, the next one, fifty fourth. What was gold about Eden before it sank to grief? What was gold? What was it that was gold? So here in Robert Frost's writing, what was it that was gold? What is it that we were able to see was gold? What is the right answer here? what is the right answer here there is actually a mix of answers that you are having by the way okay there is a mix of answers that you are having the innocence of the uh, couple the human couple that we are able to see that their innocence is also coming in you are largely able to see that their innocence is also being spoken about and there is also and there is also the unblemished happiness the unblemished happiness right before uh the perfect eden before god created no 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 the perfect uh, eden before the fall there was no hard labor that is not what is being said over here okay okay uh in the poem in the poem day is what is day nothing gold can stay nature's first green is gold hardest you to hold her uh, early leaves a flower but only for an hour but only for an hour then leaf subsides to leaf Uh, so eden sank to grief so dawn goes down to day down do goes down to day so what is it that day is referring to what is it that we are able to see that day is largely referring to what is day referring to day is referring to the dawn which has lost his beauty the uh, the dawn that has lost the beauty what is the name of the eponymous hero uh, hero's beloved uh, an oriental woman in lord byron's narrative poem mazeppa right mazeppa you are able to see that uh, there is hero's beloved the orientalized woman in mazeppa what is the name of the the central uh, orientalized female that we are able to see in mazeppa what is the right answer here what is the correct answer here yes priyanka nag has answered it correctly priyanka nag is absolutely right theresa is the correct answer right so mazeppa narrative poem by lord byron telling you about ivan mazeppa who later became hetman military leader of ukraine and you are able to see that here uh, mazeppa is looking at theresa's character okay so please remember that okay here we go Lord Byron's the vision of judgment was written in response to which of the following poets It was written in response to which of the following poets Written in response to which of the following poets which of the following poets you are able to see it was written in response to It was written in response to Robert Southey, right? It was written in response to Robert Southey's Robert Southey, poet laureate, a vision of judgment. Then the vision of judgment was written by Byron. Please remember that. In Byron's English Bards and Scotch Reviewers, which of the following writers influenced him while using heroic couplet? heroic couplet that was being used which writer had been very helpful a, a sort of an influence altogether 
what is the correct answer here what becomes the correct answer here what is the right answer here what is the correct answer uh, shalini 58 questions we are done so let's just back up a little maybe let's do at least 75 questions then 25 i can help you out uh, via telegram i can give you those questions via telegram uh yes what is the right answer here what is the right answer here what what becomes the right answer so heroic couplets was basically influenced by pope's dunciad pope's dunciad which of the following poems by John Dryden is dealing with the great fire of London that ran from September 2nd, uh, 7th to uh, the 2nd September to 7th September in 1666? So which is dealing with that? Which, which work is actually dealing with that poem? Which work is dealing with that poem? Yes, it's Annus Mirabilis. It's Annus Mirabilis, right? Annus Mirabilis is dealing with it right annus mirabilis is dealing with with the great fire so to say please remember that alexander pope's poem the temple of fame a vision is inspired by which of the following middle english poets which of the following middle english poets what is the correct answer here So the Temple of Fame, a vision in, uh, is, is basically inspired uh, by Chaucer's The House of Fame, right? It's, it's actually an inspiration from Chaucer's House of Fame. Please remember that. The Temple of Fame is an inspiration from Chaucer's House of Fame. Okay, moving on. Uh... So Walter Ellick's poem, The Lie, is, what is a lie? Oh, nice, 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 yeah. We're just ending only, so don't worry about it. The lie is, what is uh, what is the correct answer here? Let's just do till 75, then I'll give you the remaining 25 questions on Telegram. You can practice it at your own pace also, okay? Uh, uh, social criticism poem is absolutely the right answer. The lie is basically trying to uh, tell you about the social atmosphere altogether. Who amongst the following introduced the falters measure? The Polter's measure, very, very famous. The Polter's measure was introduced by. Who's introducing the Polter's measure? The Polter's measure was introduced by. Who was introducing the Polter's measure? The Polter's measure was introduced by. So Thomas Wyatt is introducing it. That's Priyanka. Uh, Zahida, everybody has answered it correctly. And here we are able to see Polter's measures introduced by Wired, right? So that is important. John Marston was represented by which of the following characters in Ben Johnson's satirical comedy Poet Aster? John Marston, Ben Johnson's character in Poet Aster. What is the correct answer here? What is the correct answer here? Yes, Chris Penis is absolutely the right answer. Chris Penis is absolutely the right answer. Please remember that all the characters, the allegorical characters are important. Which of the following are subjects of discussion in Walter Benjamin's essay, The Work of Art in the Age of Mechanical Reproduction? The Work of Art in the Age of Mechanical Reproduction. What is the correct answer here? What is the correct answer here? What is the correct answer here? The 
Yes, Tulika Devi has answered it correctly. Artistic and cultural authenticity of the artifact, the aestheticization of politics for production of art, the theory of art in uh, is uh, in a mass culture society. All of them, all of them are being discussed. Everything is being discussed over here by Walter Benjamin, right? He's devaluing, of course, the aura, the uniqueness of the art. So that is something which is important. Utopia is divided into two parts. What are the two parts that we are able to see? Utopia is divided into two parts. What are the two parts? What are the two parts? What are the two parts? Yes, what are the two parts that you are able to see? The two parts, what are they? Yes, the Vaida, right? Uh, dialogue of Council and Dialogue, a uh, discourse on Utopia, right? Dialogue of Council and Discourse on Utopia. Remember that, please, okay? So, Dialogue of Council and Discourse on Utopia. Those are the two parts that you're able to see. Discourse on Utopia is the second book. This is important. So, Philip Sidney's sonnet sequence, Astrophil and Stella, contains how many sonnets? How many sonnets are there? In Astrophil and Stella, how many sonnets are there in Astrophil and Stella? Astrophil and Stella, how many sonnets are coming in? How many sonnets are you able to see? 108, right? No explanation required over here. Okay. Colin Clout, a folk character originated by John Skelton, is present in which of the following works by Edmund Spencer? Right? Colin Clout's character is present in which of the following Edmund Spencer's characters? Which of the Edmund Spencer's characters you're able to see this? What is the right answer here? What is the right answer here? What becomes the correct answer here? So, Shepherd's calendar is absolutely the right answer. Okay, Shepherd's calendar becomes important. In his collection of critical essays, the well wrought urn, Cleon Brooks mentions which of the following poems by John Donne. Cleon Brooks is referring to which of the following poems by John Donne. Cleon Brooks is referring to which of the following poems by John Donne? What is the correct answer here, everybody? What is the correct answer? The canonization, the canonization, right? The canonization is absolutely the right answer here, okay? Canonization, please keep that in mind. The Woman's Prize, a Jacobian tragedy, was written as a counterpart to which of the following plays? The War of Theatres was also going between Marston Decker on one hand and Ben Johnson on the other. But there were these uh, these various kinds of attacks and uh, the so-called exchanges that we were able to see. What is the correct answer here? What becomes the right answer here? What is the right answer here? Haven't got the right answer yet. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Everybody is given like all of them but uh, one. So it's actually Taming of the Shrew. Please remember that, okay? It is actually Taming of the Shrew that we are able to see. So uh, please keep that in mind. Woman's Prize or the Tamer Tamed. Uh, this is by John Fletcher. And the counterpart to Taming of the Shrew. It is a counterpart to Taming of the Shrew, right? It's a counterpart to Taming of the Shrew. The Woman's Prize or the Tamer Tamed. Even if you've read your Oxford Companion, you will be able to answer it. Please remember that. Okay, Louis Theobald produced a play called Double Falsehood and claimed its authorship on. Theobald had produced Double Falsehood and had claimed the authorship on what? What is the correct answer here? What becomes the correct answer here? Yes, William Shakespeare is absolutely the right answer. William Shakespeare is absolutely the right answer. Which of the following is the last letter in Jonathan Swift's The Drapier's Letters? It's the last letter. It's the last letter in uh, Jonathan Swift's The Drapier's Letters. The last one. It's the last letter that you're able to see. The last letter that you're able to largely see. Head it home has got it right. Head it home is right. And uh, a humble request address to both houses of parliament. Right? That is the right answer. 
January appears as the protagonist in which of the following books of the Canterbury Tales? January is the protagonist of which of the following Canterbury Tales? Where are we able to see January's character? January's character. Where is it that we're able to look at January's character? January's character. What is the correct answer here, everyone? B is absolutely the right answer. B is absolutely the right answer. Merchant's Tale. Merchant's Tale. January, the main protagonist, right? And then you have the, the seasonal wife maid, January's character. In the monk's tale, uh, monk, uh, monk's tale of the Canterbury Tales, how many historical figures appear? How many historical figures are appearing? How many historical figures appear? How many historical figures are we able to see that are coming? What is the correct answer here? 17, okay, 17. 17 are coming. 17 are there. Lucifer, Adam, Samson, Hercules, Nicobar, Belshar, Zenobia, Pedro, Peter, uh, Oglono, Holophorus, Antichrist, and Alexander the Great, Julius Caesar. So there are 17. Which of the following Middle English poems begins with since the siege and the assault was seized at Troy? Since the siege and the assault was seized at Troy. Since the siege and the assault was seized at Troy. What is the correct answer here? Yes, absolutely right. Sir so Gorn and the Green Knight. Sir so Gorn and the Green Knight. Right. Okay. In her book, Quantum Poetics, Gwen, uh, Gwyneth Lewis, Lewis refers to which of the following Shakespearean play in order to unravel language uh, politics and writing. Language politics and writing. What is the correct answer here, everyone? What becomes the right answer here? Anyone? So it is E. It is 12th night. I think nobody has answered it correctly. So here, quantum poetics is actually something where uh, Lewis is telling you about. Lewis is taking the example of 12th night and explaining us. Let's just do five quick questions and the remaining ones I'll post it on Telegram. Which of the following poems by Dallin Thomas begins with the lines, A stranger has come to share my room in the house not right in the head. A house not right in the head. Dallin Thomas, a girl mad as birds. A girl mad as bird. So where are these lines really taken from? Where are these lines taken and from? So it's basically deaths and entrances. A love in the asylum that you're able to see these lines. Okay. Uh, so love in the asylum. It's a part of the poetry collection called deaths and entrances. Which of the following is not a theme of Gabriel O'Cara's poem, Piano and Drums? Piano and Drums. Piano and Drums. Gabriel O'Cara's poem, Piano and Drums. What is the correct answer here? Piano and Drums. So immigration, okay, immigration is not a theme. Immigration is not a theme. Colonialism, modernity, preserving positive aspects, everything is there. Immigration is not a part of Gabriel Okara's piano and drums. Please remember that, okay. In which of the following post-colonial novels does the protagonist called Mustafa appear with a troubled love life and then drowns himself in Nile? Mustafa comes and then drowns himself in Nile. What is the right answer here? What is the correct answer here? What becomes the correct answer here? Yes, absolutely right. Season of the migration to the north. So this is by the Sudanese novelist Sayab Saleh. And you're able to see Saleh's writing. Season of migration to the north is actually trying to tell you uh, about this uh, entire concept of British colonialism overall. Half of a yellow sun is based against the backdrop of. Half of a yellow sun is based against the backdrop of. What is the basis? Half of a 
half a yellow sun half a yellow sun what is the correct answer here yes by afternoon war is absolutely the right answer by afternoon war is absolutely uh, the correct answer over here it is a by afternoon war that's at the backdrop of half of a yellow sun okay uh, so that is the right answer uh, all right uh, let's just let's just do the 80th question and the remaining ones what i'll do remaining 20 i'll share it on the telegram platform for all of you considering some of you are feeling and you should take a proper rest also so the remaining 20 questions the remaining 20 questions are I'll share it on the telegram please attempt those and then tomorrow again we'll meet but let's complete or uh, tomorrow let's definitely complete 100 questions okay so tomorrow 10:30 pm let's definitely complete 100 questions and the day after tomorrow i'll i'll let you uh, have some uh, you know your time studying time all together because too much excessive overload should also not really help so mimic men here is the right answer uh, so the remaining 20 i will share it on the telegram platform if there are any other doubts please feel free to let us know make sure that you are making optimum use be calm be absolutely composed your your results would be fine don't worry and otherwise you can always do a sort of a stock check and an analysis and then take it forward from there okay thanks everyone for joining really appreciate that please make sure that all of you are very very positive and motivated at this particular juncture because that is required if there would be any other help or assistance that you require please feel free to let us Let us know about that. We'll be more than happy to help you out. Uh, the Bajus Exam Prep Net application um, doubts platform is available for everybody. Anybody doesn't really matter whether you're a, a classroom student or not. Anybody can actually access the doubts platform. So please make judicious use of that. Thanks so much, everyone, uh, for joining in. And take good care of your health overall. Best of luck for your exams. And if there are any other concerns that we can help you out with, please feel free to let us know. Okay. Thank you so much. God bless each one of you. Take care. God bless. Bye. Bye, everyone. Best of luck. Bye everyone take care